that said, I do think that as like a collective entity that we are, is there a way for us to abstract ourselves? No, I don't. That's why I think that social location and positioning is important. It's also why I think that people like uh, Gary Francione, and I know I'm taking hot shots at a, an easy shot to in this crowd, like like his like absolute call that like, you must be vegan or all else while ignoring like the problem that, or the problematics of like racial or social oppression is intensely problematic, right? Um, that said, I do think that there are ways that we can try to remove ourselves from influencing others, right? Uh, I think that we can say that we can look at how we affect and interact with others and say that is a process that I have created that I need to stop. And I think that process, like this is an artificial process, for instance, pet ownership, right? Or animal agriculture, we can look at and we can say we don't need to have that cow, we don't need to assign like, the idea that that cow is happy, and instead we can engage in no process towards that. And that by engaging in no activity, offer a way to let new connections develop. And if we also flip through this consciousness to the idea that we are open to their interaction onto us and we are open to their interaction onto them, even if we can't remove all of like our human distinctiveness, we are at least operating and we are at least create a more level playing field. We create a playing field where we can think that they're interacting with us. Like in where they're influencing us as much as we can influence them. Right? Does that make sense? So what, what you're saying is that it takes a conscious effort of will and we always have to self Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not, it's not an endpoint, it's a process. It's right? a process. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think it is possible, you mentioned pet ownership. Yeah. Do you think it is, it, it will be possible to maintain human understanding and human empathy with non-human beings if we do not have, if we are isolated from regular social I mean, no, but I don't necessarily, I don't think I would advocate for isolationism either. I think that, I mean, one of the things that we have to, one of the things that we have to address is that even actions that we think are value neutral are intensely problematic, right? When we drive, when we fly, we influence and change and change, like change how, how the non-human interacts. When we pave a road, like right, we are often paving over green paths, meaning like meaning areas, etc., that the non-human inhabitants, so what we might do as a solitary human action, is in fact affecting thousands, if not millions, of other not like other beings. And I think that part, like what I would like to see is a calling into question of all human activity from like, from an a priori stance. Let's go back, challenge everything we do, everything we have done and see if we can find new ways that that affects the non-human, and then use that as a touchstone to change and to change, like change how we operate, right? Even a city, right, a city or like a house controls and shapes the environment around us, and one of the things that we need to operate, like, uh, approach is, can these things be kept, or are we in our, like, in our, by doing nothing, engaging with them in oppressing, like, oppressing the non-human, and I think that needs to be challenged, right? And so, like, yes, I don't think isolationism is good, but I don't think isolationism is possible. And I think that, that it is better to question the way that we are dealt with, like, the way that even the acts that we think would be isolated deal and interact with others. And I don't want to offer too much down that road because that's like a whole other conference and a whole other panel. But like, it's, I, I think that's a starting point. Okay. Thank you. I guess I have a question for you, though. Do you have a question? Yeah, we'll go to the audience. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you too. Um, Norm, uh, looking at, um, you said, and uh, don't get me wrong, and, you know, just kind of developing, you know, where do we go, is that there's a lot of people, you said, as long as, uh, and I probably know your answer, but I just wanted clarification, is that as long as somebody um, loves life, um, we should respect them. And I think a lot of people, uh, have internalized oppression um, and don't understand what it means to love life uh, or love life what it could be, um, but they don't love what it is. And so, um, so how do we discuss the idea that of, of creating a self-consciousness and self-worth and um, while at the same time uh, defending their right to, to live? I think that all, we normally think of sentience as the abhorrent
types of suffering and the desire for happiness. And I think that is too constricted a definition. I think sentience actually has two components. And I think they are absolutely primary. I think they are, are fundamental components of sentience uh, at its very core, at its very origins. One is the, uh, I'm sorry, there's a sentient being walking across <laughs> the table in front of me. Um, one is the abhorrence of suffering and the, the desire for happiness. And the other is the love of life and the dread of death. I think that, that all beings inherently, all sentient beings inherently love the fact of life and dread the fact of death. And the fact that they may not, that, that because of oppression or oppressive circumstances, they may not love the life that they are living does not mean that they do not love the fact of life. And the role of a, a, and the goal of a liberatory politics should be to remove that oppression, to end that oppression, so that they can love the, the life that they are living as well as the fact of life. And when oppression gets so bad that people, or suffering gets so intense, that people will choose death rather than continued life. I don't think that that undercuts the original premise. I think it just indicates that, it just indicates how horrific oppression can become and how great our obligation is to try to ameliorate. I don't know if that's responsive to your question. Uh, or yeah, kind of speaking to the not dead yet movement yeah. and speaking, saying, but there are people with depression, mental and physical beings that they don't want to be there anymore, you know, because they don't like the, the state of their oppression. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think the, the I think the, the love of life and the dread of death is still present in people in that in that circumstance. I just think it has been suffocated, if you will, by the, the suffering. There, there is a limit to the suffering that anyone can, can endure. And when uh, too great suffering can override the love of the, the dread of death, but that does not mean that the dread of death is not a problem. And in fact, it is the birthright of every sensitive being, and we should do everything we can to ensure that that everyone can uh, can take advantage of it. All right. So I want to talk about a little bit about like the question of morality um, and like consciousness. Why it's important. People often act in immoral ways, have immoral thoughts. Um, and like, I remember one of you saying that we don't use humans as an end, but we use animals as an end. We use humans as an end all the time for various things, for various purposes, to get to various places. So, um, and many people have like this utilitarian view of people. So why do you think being moral, this is like an open question, why do you think being moral is so important um, in this case, because a lot of people say, you know, capitalism is immoral, and we're in a system that's bad, etc. So, and, like, if you love life and are happy, why do these questions play out of consciousness, like, like perhaps in a sense, ignorance is bliss, and why in this case, I know it's a lot of questions, why in this case, like, of animals or people with disabilities, um, you know, eco-ability, uh, like, specifically as opposed to others that claim we should not be immoral, is or should be important to people and our activists of all types, and why should institutions be challenged? I guess I'll take a swing. I guess I want to before I before I go deeper in this. Is your question like what is like 